So I, I just wanted to provide everyone with additional information on the case of the, the uh, six-year-old girl who drowned in uh, the Erie Canal this week. Um, first of all, let me apologize for doing this on a Sunday, but I'm not going to be available tomorrow, so I want to make sure that you had what you needed uh, and then you had an opportunity to speak to, to us. Um, so as, as I said the other day, um, we intended to uh, conduct a full and thorough investigation of, of this matter. Um, and in doing so, uh, several developments have, have come to light. Um, <coughs> first of all, uh, as part of that investigation, um, we uh, searched the vehicle that the uh, child arrived at the park in. So, um, as I told you the other day, uh, the child, Aaliyah, was with uh, two adult uh, family members. Um, one male, one female, and her sister, who's 11. Um, the adults had driven a vehicle to the park that day. Uh, we searched that vehicle uh, as part of the investigation. During that search, we located approximately one half pound of marijuana in the car. Um, further interviews were conducted with those two adults. Um, last night, based on the location of that marijuana in the car, those adults uh, were charged with uh, criminal possession of marijuana in the third degree, a class E felony. Uh, as a uh, continuation of our investigation, we had caused to conduct a search at the home where these two adults had been staying. Uh, they were both they were both from out of town. Uh, but they had been staying for a few weeks at a location on, uh, at a residence on Buck Hill Road in the town of Greece. Uh, so as part of our, our investigation, we had cause to search that residence. Uh, in that search, we located 31 pounds of marijuana. Um, it's a rather large seizure of marijuana. Uh, based on that seizure, we will be filing, filing additional charges of criminal, criminal possession of marijuana in the first degree, which is a Class C felony against both individuals. Um, in addition, uh, based on our investigation, all the statements we've obtained, interviews that we've completed, uh, we intend to charge both individuals with endangering the welfare of a, of a child based on their lack of care provided for Aaliyah Williams, which led to her death. Uh, the two individuals that are currently in the Monroe County Jail uh, charged with criminal possession of marijuana in the third degree are Laura E. McCasland, 25 years old, of Midvale, Texas, and Tyler J. Canale, 23 years old, of Clovis, California. Uh, as far as an explanation as to the relationship uh, between the child and the adults, Canale is a lot Aaliyah Williams' cousin. And he was in town visiting from out of town, staying with uh, Aaliyah's grandfather, who is also his grandfather. And, uh, I believe that's all I have. If we have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So what is the woman's relation, um, Laura, or is she not related? The woman is actually not related to the child. Okay. She is a female friend of Canale. Is there any indication that the two adults were high when they were supposed to be supervising the other child? Um, yes, there's, there were some admissions that marijuana had been consumed that day. By them, both of them? Yes. Were, um, you said they were the ones in charge of supervising her at the, the time that she went missing and uh, went in the water? Yes, they had, uh, Canale and McCasland had taken the two children to the park um, for the purpose of going canoeing. Uh, they were the sole people uh, charged with the care of those children at that time. Did they 
were you able to find out how uh, the child got away from them and how they weren't able to, to how long it was before they, they noticed that she was gone? I don't have any additional information since the last time we spoke on that. Once again, uh, McCasland left briefly with Aaliyah Williams. They went to a store nearby. They returned to the park. When they returned, Williams uh, went to the bank of the, the, the canal to retrieve her footwear. She was not being watched at the time. Uh, McCasland uh, at some point looked and realized that Williams was gone. Uh, the assumption was made that she had fallen into the canal, but no one saw, at this point, with all the interviews we've done, we have no witnesses that saw Williams go into the canal. So she basically left for trying to go to the canal to get her shoes on her own? Yeah. yeah. That's correct. You said you conducted interviews, but if there were no witnesses, who would you interview? Hey, come on in. Um, we conducted a, multiple interviews of, of the, the people involved, these two adults that were d discussing, uh, persons with knowledge, people who had been in the park, uh, people who are relatives of uh, the people involved. Uh, anyone with any connection to this incident has been interviewed. So any people in the park were there that day? There were people in the park that day, yes. None that witnessed the event but there were people in the park uh, that day uh, that were people with knowledge that we, we have interviewed. Um, did they say they were, uh, how long did they, you said, consume marijuana that day? How long did they consume it before they went on the scene? What did they say? So, you know, this is a, a pending criminal charge. I don't want to get too deep into the facts okay. uh, out of respect for the district attorney's office. Um, the, the, the charges are based on the totality of the circumstances, uh, all the events of that day, uh, and the, the care that was exercised over Aaliyah Williams by these two individuals. So it's, it's really, it's, it's the totality of the circumstances and the manner in which she was cared for over the course of, of those few hours. Why not charge her now with endangering the child? We, we're going to. Okay. We, uh, we're, we intend to charge, uh, charge both of them. In the very near future, yes. They were, she would, they were charged uh, last night with the initial charge of possession of marijuana, and that was to hold them. So they're held in Monroe County Jail on uh, various degrees of bail. Uh, and then we intend to file additional, ch additional charges. They will, be char they will both be charged with endangering the welfare of the child. Yeah. Yep. You just didn't have enough evidence to charge them? We were continuing our investigation. Last night. Two nights ago? I'm sorry. Two nights ago. Yeah. Friday evening. And I know that they apparently took their eyes off of the child when she went down to the canal, but is there any other, I don't know, safety protocols that people are thinking about changing along the canal way, or do we still think it's a safe area, and, or that people just need to watch their kids more closely? I mean, there's a lot of bodies of water in, in this area. I mean, if you have young children next to bodies of water, they have to be watched. I mean, it, you can do anything you can to, to make things safer, but the bottom line is if you're charged with the care of, of young children, you have to watch them, especially next to bodies of water. I don't care if it's a swimming pool. Um, kids die every year by falling in the swimming pools. It's, it's a, a pretty set basic concept of child care that if they're near a body of water, they need to be watched. I, I didn't interview them. I, I don't know what their state of mind was, uh, so I'm sorry. I can't. I can't tell you to answer that question. So if they only get, it's possible that they may get off on the endangering charges. That they would only be charged for this marijuana possession, right? I can't speak to the adjudication of the charges. You know, that'll be up to the district attorney's office. The, the I, I can tell you that the the lowest charge is the endangering the welfare of a child. The, the more serious charges are the marijuana charges. Mm -hmm. But they're unrelated to the, I mean, you can really look at them as two separate matters. The marijuana was located as part of our investigation. So that's technically a more serious charge? 
New York State law. Yeah, well, that's that's the charge that we were able to charge them with. And how long did they stay? There's three different level charges. The, the, the endangering is an A misdemeanor. The criminal possession of marijuana third is an E felony. And the criminal possession of marijuana first is a C felony. Um, so that's a significant charge um, that could result in some significant jail time. I, I don't have the sentencing guidelines in front of me. A C felony is probably a minimum of 5 to 15, I would imagine. I know you were really emotional when you found out this was happening, which is obviously a really sad story about the events of Um How are you feeling now? Want to be happy to people who are ultimately held responsible that they could be facing some jail time as a result of this? How does it make you feel? And how does it make you? Uh, frankly, it doesn't make me feel any better. You know, um, 29 years of police work, the worst cases I've ever invest in investigated uh, involved the death of children. It's the, uh, the most horrible thing I've ever seen. So, you know, regardless of what happens after a six-year-old ch child dies, um, it really doesn't bring any, um, any joy or, or, or relief um, because this young six-year-old girl is still dead. Um, hopefully, um, you know, there, it provides some form of closure, but I don't know that it will. Uh, but at least, um, as, as Deputy Chief Forsyth said to me, you know, we need to be the voice for this, this, this little girl. Um, and that's, that's what we're doing right here, right now. We're, we're speaking for this little girl. And, defending her in any way we can. How are the parents doing? Um, the parents are incredibly upset. The parents are, are not <laughs> having a very hard time. Um, they are not well. Hey John, this is Lori. Could you, um, it, it, I, I missed a lot of the, uh, what happened. Is there a week two? How about if I, I'll talk to you afterwards, okay? Going back to the parents, where were they that day? Did they know that these two had been with their children within 10 minutes of that day? The mom had, had dropped the children off at, at uh, the grandfather's house um, where they're, they're staying, where, the, where McCasland and, and Canale are staying. Um, I, I know that she knew that McCasland and Canale were, were, uh, were there because uh, they've been staying there for a while. Uh, I don't know that she knew that they were going to the park to go canoeing. Uh, it's very difficult to speak to mom right now. She's having a very rough time. So we've made attempts to speak with her. It's, she's ha it's very difficult to speak with her right now. Has there been conversation with the grandparents on their knowledge of where the kids would be that day with their cousins? The, the grandparent has been very cooperative with the investigation, very cooperative. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you, you may have addressed this, and I might have just missed it. Um, with the charges obviously taking place with the marijuana possession, uh, and then the plans to press charges on endangering the welfare of the child, would the endangerment charges, would you have had those if it wasn't for the, the marijuana possession that you saw earlier, would, or was this something the endangering the welfare? that you were going to go forward with those charges regardless? Like I said, the endangering charge really is based on the totality of the circumstances, everything that's involved, uh, and, and there's a lot of uh, moving parts. Uh, but basically, you know, we're looking at uh, not just the split second when Aaliyah went into the water, the entire few hours that they were at the park uh, and that day, the entire day, really, when they were charged with the care of that child and, and what transpired over the course of that day and those few hours. Uh, so we're basing our charge on the totality of circumstances, everything that led up to this event, including this event. And like I said, um, it, it, out of 
respect to the district attorney's office. I won't get too deep into the weeds with details as far as the, the elements of the charge, but suffice it to say that we feel that uh, we have probable cause to charge these two individuals with endangering the welfare of a child. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we we intend to file these charges, and they'll proceed through the court system, um, and, and you know that'll be in the hands of the district attorney's office. Were they arraigned? They were arraigned on the criminal possession of marijuana, third degree, and I believe you have their their uh, uh, their bail in front of you. So they are in the Monroe County Jail. They are arraigned on the uh, criminal possession of marijuana, third. Uh, they're held on those charges. They have yet to be arraigned on the criminal possession of marijuana first and the endangering the welfare of the child. And no idea yet on when exactly that will happen? No. no. It'll, it'll happen in the near future. Okay. So will they arraign on those other charges Friday or yesterday? Friday, right? So Friday night? Yeah, Friday night. Thanks for coming out on Sunday. I'll tell you, uh, we can step aside and I'll start over or whatever. <laughs> no, I don't mind at all. Here, you know what? Let's step out here. Hang on. Mr. Freshman? Yeah, Zawa? Yeah, I'm sure it's Zawa.